Being able to improvise during our D&D games is one of the most important skills we can bring to our table. This is a lifelong skill that we can work on every time we sit down to run our games. And the better we get at improvisation, the better our games are going to be for both us and our players. And while it's a really hard skill to master, there are a few tools that we can use to help us improvise during our game. Today I'm going to talk about seven different tools that we can use to help us improvise during our D&D games. Every time I talk to dungeon masters about the tools they use the most to improvise during their game, a list of names is the number one tool on that list. Almost every DM has a list of names that they keep in front of them during their game so that anytime they need to improvise a monster's name or an NPC name, they have a name ready to go. There are a lot of different places that you can get these names. The Player's Handbook actually has names for all of the different character races, and Xanathar's Guide to Everything has a number of different tables in there to have names from all different kinds of cultures. One of my favorite websites, Donjon, has an excellent random name generator that I use all the time. You can also use fantasy name generators or any number of different random name generators that you can find on the internet. Of course, I have my own random generator that I have up on Sly Flourish. You can use that. I also have random names that are inside the Lazy DM's workbook. Whatever source you use, having a list of names in front of you that you can use to generate names for NPCs or monsters or anything else that you need during the game is a really valuable improvisational tool that nearly every DM uses to help them improvise during the game. Writing down 10 secrets and clues that the characters might discover in the next game without defining where the characters will find those secrets and clues is a really powerful improvisational aid. This is such a powerhouse tool that I wrote an entire new book around that idea called Return of the Lazy Dungeon Master. It was the reason I wrote that book was to include this tip, and it's a really powerful idea. While you're preparing your game, you sit down and write down 10 things that the characters may discover in the next game. These could be information about them and their backgrounds, it could be elements of the story, it could be information about villains or anything else that's going on in the world that's of interest to the characters. But you don't define where the characters find these pieces of information. And instead, while you're running your game, the characters might discover them in many different ways. They might find a piece of lore by studying an ancient sword. They might discover this on the mosaic of a crumbling wall. They might learn it from an NPC at a bar. It doesn't matter where they learn it, what matters is we have a good list of specific things that characters can learn. It's a very powerful improvisational tool, and one that I highly recommend. Number three, random tables are a fantastic way to shake our minds up and give us new ideas that we can drop right in our game that we never would have come up with on our own. The key idea here is to have the right random tables in front of you at any given time. When I wrote the Lazy DM's workbook, I wanted to have a focused set of random tables that helped you improvise directly during the game. Some of these tables include monuments, items, traps, town events, monsters, and, and big important things that you're going to drop into your game. You have, if you have too many random tables, it's going to be hard to find the right random table for the moment and to roll on it and actually come up with something quickly. But too few random tables and you're going to end up running up with cliche ideas. So you want something right in the middle. Not too deep into the details, but also not so vague that it's not actually useful for the table. There are many sources for these tables. The Dungeon Master's Guide and Xanathar's Guide to Everything both have excellent sets of random tables. I have an article called The Gems of the DMG, you'll find the link in the show notes below, that has what I think to be the most useful tables that exist inside the Dungeon Master's Guide. These would be good ones to bookmark, either physically or online, so that you have these tables on hand, and when you need them, when, you're, when it comes time to improvise something during your game, you can pull up the right table, do a couple of quick rolls, and come up with something interesting. Now, along with random names, having portraits for NPCs can be a very powerful aid, both in person and online. My friend Joe at Inkwell Ideas has put together a bunch of different decks of NPC portraits. These have NPC details on one side, but more importantly, a good picture of the NPC on the other side. Having a couple of these decks on hand, again, both physically or virtually, is a great way for us to tie a face to a name anytime we're generating an NPC. Whenever we drop a new NPC into our game, we can flip through our deck, find the first card that fits the character as best as we can see, and drop that on the table, or show it to our players so they can see an actual face tied to a specific name in the game. These NPC portraits are a great way to tie a face to a name so that we can really make the world come alive for our players. Now, just like random tables, we probably don't want too many of these on hand at any given time. I think one or two decks is probably as many as we need, maybe 50 to 100 in front of us that we can quickly skim through to say, oh yeah, that's the right character for this name. And then drop it on the table or drop it into our virtual tabletop or share it with our players online. And that way they can tie a face to a name in our game. 
Whether we're playing in person or online, it helps us to have a shared visual space where we can share images with the players, we can share maps, we can show tokens, we have some way to have a shared representation of a space or an area that occurs in the game. If we're playing in person, I really love the Pathfinder Basic Flip Mat. In this case, it is a blank flip mat, it is dry and wet erasable, we can draw anything we want on there. We can draw weird symbols that the characters see, we can draw side views of stuff, and of course we can draw battle mats for combat play. Now, if we're playing online, we can use a virtual tabletop for this. My favorite virtual tabletop is Owlbear Rodeo. It's super easy to use, super fast to set up, and it gives us a nice blank space where we can drop in images, we can show character positioning, we can set up little sticky notes, anything that we want to put on here, we can put on here and share with our players. Having some sort of shared visual environment is a great way to make sure that everybody has a decent view of what's happening in this world. It's a great way for us to articulate things that are happening in the world in a way that we can all understand. While there are many pre-printed battle maps that we can use during our game, blank maps give us a blank slate that we can use to improvise all kinds of things during our game. Even if we're using pre-printed poster maps, it's useful to have a blank one on hand for those situations where things go in a direction we did not expect. Now, along with a blank map, it helps us to have a set of generic tokens that we can use to represent the characters or represent NPCs or monsters in a given situation where positioning is really important. Albert Rodeo has a whole default set of generic tokens that we can use to represent both characters and NPCs or monsters in our Albert Rodeo game without having to load any new tokens into the system. Now, if you're playing in person, you can build a set of generic tokens very similar to these that you can use for basically any situation that occurs in your physical game as well. I have a link in the show notes below for both the video and the article that talk about building these lazy monster tokens that you can use and stick in your kit to improvise just about any battle you can imagine during your game. The realms underneath our world could be laced with ancient caverns and deep dungeons, and we never know when the characters are going to open up and explore one of these locations. A fantastic way to improvise a dungeon like this is to code to the Dyson's Map Archive. It's a fantastic resource of over a thousand different maps for both towns and villages, dungeons, caverns, and all kinds of different locations that your characters might explore. Whenever the characters go to an area you didn't expect, you can open up this archive, scroll down, find the first map that you think fits the situation, and use that map for your game. I've used this archive of maps over and over again for both my custom homebrew adventures and even published adventures where the characters went in a direction I didn't expect. Dyson has created an incredible resource of maps that we can use for just about any situation that we need to improvise during our game. It's one of my favorite resources for this hobby, and I highly suggest checking it out. And while these maps work very well for virtual tabletop play, you can print these maps and use them at your physical table if you happen to be playing in person. You can either print out a small version of this map on a piece of paper, or break it up into pieces and print it on a few different sheets of paper. You can also print it out as a blueprint at either FedEx or Staples or another printer like that. Blueprint printings are significantly cheaper than full color printings. You can usually get a 24 by 36 inch map, a good size battle map, for usually for under 10 bucks. Having such a tremendous archive of maps available to you is an incredibly powerful tool to help you build out your world very quickly and very easily in your game. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, you can help me out by subscribing to the Sly Flourish newsletter, supporting me directly on Patreon, picking up any of my books, or subscribing to my channel here on YouTube. Thank you very much and have a great day.